Hello everyone, welcome back to the Starship Lightbreaker, the ship equipped with the means to break the speed of light in every conceivable way. Today we're back to our Faster Than Light series with the fourth element on the list, instant transportation. Instant transportation is one of the easiest methods to conceptualize. You're here, and then you're there, with nothing in between. But it turns out, in order to actually do it, you have to break more laws of physics than any other method. And today, I'm going to tell you why it's so complicated and what would have to be different about our understanding of the universe in order to actually be able to do it. It's easy to imagine a process that would instantly get us from one place in the universe to another. You could go into a room, a device, a machine, something like that, just enter in your coordinates, press a button, and bam, you're there. This doesn't make sense according to known physics for a lot of reasons, the major one being special relativity. In order for instant transportation to work, there has to be an instant throughout all the universe that is right now, so that you can disappear and appear at the exact same moment. If we take a reference frame, that is, if we decide that some speed is zero, maybe me standing here or you sitting wherever you are, that is zero speed, then we can define a slice throughout all the universe, a 3D snapshot that is right now. So you think, well, that's right now. That is the dividing line between the future and the past. So instant transportation is going to take place in that 3D snapshot. Not so fast. Special relativity says that anyone traveling at a different speed, if they calculate their 3D snapshot throughout all of space that is right now, according to their reference frame, they will get a different slice through space time. If someone walks past you and gives you a high five, then all the points in their present in front of them are in your future. And all the points in their present behind them are in your past. I've gone into more detail on this in plenty of other videos, and so you can browse the links in the description to check those out if you want. Long story short, because space-time is relative, then even if we could figure out some method to instantly transport between points in space, that exact same method could be used to transport instantly through time. And not just sort of a, is it future or is it past over there faster than the speed of light, but you could do a bounce round trip and come back exactly to where you began in the future or in the past. So what would have to be true if we wanted just instantaneous space travel, but not time travel? Well, we would need the same thing as we would need for any method of faster than light travel to not allow time travel, an objective reference frame. We think of the present as a boundary between the future and the past. The present is what exists, the future is what's going to exist, and the past is what has existed but no longer exists. According to special relativity, that's not how it works. The boundary between the future and the past is not the present, but the future and past light cones working together. Anything outside of something's future and past light cones is neither future nor past, but elsewhere. And for any method of faster than light travel, there's no boundary between future FTL and past FTL. If you can break through the light cone, then all trajectories between the future and past light cone are open to you. So in order to prevent backward time travel with faster than light travel, there must be an absolute present throughout all the universe. So what would have to be true in order for that to be true? Well, special relativity would have to be wrong. The other possibility is that there is an objective reference frame, and in that reference frame, the present of absolute stopped would be the absolute barrier between the future and past. This present would transform according to special relativity. So for someone traveling at a different speed calculating the present throughout all the universe, they would not agree with the objective present. Is there any evidence in support of an objective reference frame? Pretty much no. There is a reference frame of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the radiation that came from the Big Bang that can be measured all over the sky. 
we can take redshift measurements and find a speed at which the average wavelength of all the cosmic microwave background is the same in every direction. That is a possible hint at an objective reference frame, but it is the only hint, and we have no reason to believe that that has any effect on special relativity. Nevertheless, any of you sci-fi world builders who want some extra punch to your realism can feel free to use the cosmic microwave background frame as an in-world justification for an objective reference frame, which you can use as justification for faster than light travel without time travel. So supposing that problem could be solved, what are some possible methods we could use to instantly travel across the universe? Well, we've talked about a couple of them in previous videos. One is a zero-length wormhole, a doorway that you can step through and just be somewhere else. Another is through hyperspace, and now I want to give a nod to Isaac Arthur's recent video on folding space, where if the actual universe has more than three dimensions, then perhaps we could fold our three-dimensional membrane in these higher dimensions so that a point here and a point here become the same place. They touch each other or overlap in the fourth or higher dimensions. And here we get to the age-old example of the sheet of paper, where imagine this is a two-dimensional universe, it's flat, it's 2D. If we have a point here and a point here, it takes this distance to travel between them, unless there's a third dimension in which we can fold the piece of paper, and now those two points are at the same place through the third dimension. Even though if we just look at the two dimensions, it's still the same distance from one point to the other. What about non-locality? This is a term that gets thrown about by scientists and science enthusiasts and sci-fi writers, and it means things don't exist in just one place, but exist in multiple places at the same time. In science fiction, it's usually talked about as consciousness or telepathy or something like that. In science, it's usually talked about in the context of quantum physics. So might quantum physics, perhaps even quantum entanglement, be something that is a sign of instantaneous communication or instantaneous something. Two events, one here and one here, correlate even if you take the measurements too fast for light to travel between them. But the thing about quantum entanglement, as we talked about in our quantum entanglement video, is that it is only correlation. It's not causation. And the non-locality of a quantum wave function is not just now, but it is through any space-like slice you draw throughout the universe. And it doesn't even have to be a valid now slice. As long as the tangent on that function never exceeds the speed of light, then the normalization of that quantum wave function will always be one particle, or however many particles are entangled together. But that doesn't stop us science fiction writers from inventing a new kind of particle which behaves as we imagine quantum entanglement to. In my novel, there's a thing called connected particle pairing, which is two particles where if you do something to one, like you jiggle it or you move it, the same thing happens to the other one on the other side at the exact same time, no matter where in the universe it is. I say again, this is not quantum entanglement. It is something new that I made up for my book. So those are three ways we might be able to travel or send information instantaneously wormholes, space folding through hyperspace, and connected particle pairs. As far as we know, none of these are actually possible, but who knows what the future will bring. And everything is on the table for sci-fi writers. So a couple of questions come to mind. For one, what would cause a limit on the range of instantaneous travel? I have no clue, so if you're a sci-fi world builder, figuring that out is a challenge for you. And also, if there's instantaneous travel, what if matter ends up in the same space as other matter? In thinking about this, maybe it would get stuck. Maybe it would explode. But there actually is science that tells us what happens when matter tries to occupy the same space as other matter. It comes from quantum physics, and it's called the Pauli exclusion principle. When certain types of particles that fall into a category called fermions, that is, matter, try to occupy the same space, their wave functions don't let them do that. The classic example is electron orbitals. There can only be two electrons per orbital. That's because there are only two configurations for an electron wave function that are allowed to occupy the same space. What do I mean by allowed? 
I mean, if you try to solve the Schrodinger equation with a different value, you get a nonsense answer, like 4 equals 2. That's the Pauli exclusion principle, and it's why matter is solid and rigid and doesn't pass through itself. And because these are quantum wave functions we're talking about, they can instantly change. So if, for instance, another object just popped into existence in the same space as this webcam, the matter of both objects would instantly rearrange themselves so that the Pauli exclusion principle is obeyed. We would get something uh, weird and big, and maybe it would explode with a nuclear blast, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's instant transportation in a nutshell. It doesn't jive with special relativity because there's no objective slice of now throughout all the universe to call the present. And in order for it to work, there would have to be an objective now throughout all the universe to call the present. And in order for that to work, there would have to be an objective reference frame. And other than the cosmic microwave background, which doesn't really count, we have no sign that an objective reference frame exists. Next time in the Faster Than Light series, we will talk about tachyons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.